Hey there, this is Phil Ogilvie with Silt Wine Co. and my friend Jeremy White. Uh, we're here to, first of all, just th say thank you for attending our first uh, virtual tasting. We got our next virtual tasting coming up this Thursday. Just want to encourage you guys to get your shipment in, uh, purchase your flight. This Thursday we've got two sparkling wines and our still Chenin Blanc. Actually, all our Chenin Blancs. Clarksburg is known for its Chenin Blanc. We're really excited about them. Um, the tasting is this Thursday at 5 p.m. And uh, we want you to get your orders in so that we can get that shipping to you right away. And we'll even do some staff delivery. And of course, uh, club members, you're going to get your discount on the, the flight bundle as well. Okay? Um, so I've invited Jeremy. Jeremy is a certified sommelier. He has been a huge help to us as we're training our own staff and on how to properly open and present our wines we try to keep that premium experience so I asked Jeremy to come in uh, and really help us shoot this video to talk about opening two pretty gnarly bottles of <laughs> wine that uh, well at least one a lot of people haven't opened a, a bottle of wine that has a crown cap on it so first of all let's talk about getting prepared for this Thursday's tasting a lot of people have received their wines already uh, maybe They'll receive them tomorrow or the next day, but how do they prepare to make sure they have a great tasting experience by the time it starts on Friday uh, or Thursday at five? Start with making sure your wine's at the right temperature. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're pulling it off of the table where it's been uh, all day long, it's probably not going to be the best thing. Yeah. Uh, refrigerator is a great place to start. Get your wines chilled and in the fridge. Um, if you have an ice or an ice bucket, get those sparkling wines on ice a good half an hour before you and great. anticipate opening them. Great. And then opening i mean the the still shannon is as easy as ever but uh let's it's talk about so hard. yeah uh, uh let's talk about the sparkling the two sparklings we've got two different closures there right so this is your uh classic um sparkling wine style basket closure and then you have what's called the uh, the crown closure on it uh with this bottle here uh you may or may not have opened these at home they have the capsule on the outside and underneath we have the cork and a little basket that holds that pressure inside. Now all of these bottles come with a cool little tab on the outside, but I find that lots of times they fail a little bit. So I always cut around the bottom of the foil as well to give it a little head start. And then when you go to pull that tab, nice. it nice comes off easy. just that much easier. And it looks better that way too. Right? right. Uh, now from here we have our basket with a little twist top. Now right now it's holding that cork in and all the pressure inside that is that lovely uh, CO2 that makes it such a well, lively, fun beverage. When we open the bottle up, we want to keep pressure on the top while we open that basket just in case there's an excessive amount of pressure inside. We can help control any accidents. We don't want to break any of Shannon's beautiful lines. Or post somebody out. Out. Right, right? Or shoot someone. So with our hand on the top, we lift the bottle and twist the bottle itself. Most people try to twist the cork. While you're holding on to that uh, basket on the outside, it's gonna help give you a good hold, but all of your torque is in the bottom of the nice. bottle and you can oh, that slowly control pretty. that release. Sounds right? pretty. I think we should probably have a Just little. Just a little taste, you know. We'll, we'll save the actual tasting notes for David on Thursday, but you know, you've gone through such hard work. You gotta <laughs> enjoy it. Right. Oh man, gotta love that Shannon. Cheers. So we've got a second closure, this crown cap. That's uh, probably gonna be unique to a lot of people in, in the wine and uh, in, in wine tasting. Right, and I'm gonna let David get into why that closure mm -hmm. is the way it is. Uh, it's really cool. But it is a hand dipped wax bottle, uh, which we need to get through that wax first and foremost. So you get your blade on your handy wine key and just cut against the glass right below the lip of that right. crown. Oh. Get right Do not the cut your thumbs, people. Cut to the glass, not to your thumb, right? And then just using the tip of that blade, try and get underneath that wax and it should pop right off. Beautiful. And I gotta say, that these were hand waxed by some of our staff. Shout out to McKenzie. Uh, and then hand labeled as well. Uh, 
so we do we do a little of that action in house. Well, and then from from there, uh, again, you have a lot of pressure in that bottle, a little more than your average Budweiser type enclosure. Uh, when you do use your wine key to open the top or your favorite church key, uh, keep your pressure on that top lid so that it gets that nice release, and you don't go woo. Oh, nice, nice and effervescent, all naturally carbonated. Getting into Thursdays. Right. Uh, I've, I've yeah, I'm not going to steal Dave's thunder on that one. <laughs> That's great. Oh, man. That is tasty. No, i got to get a little special. Oh, you got to get a little of that action. Jeremy, we've got uh, two bottles of sparkling open. Let's talk mm -hmm. about saving them as long as possible. All right. How do we do that? Um, so uh, after the tasting uh, on Thursday of last week, I had three open bottles. Those were all nice still wines. I was able to put the tops right on, put them right back in the refrigerator. Uh, wines, be they red or white, will last much, much longer in the fridge because you're going to stop down that oxidization. Stop and get that O2 in there. And you're going to slow that process by having it chilled down. So put them, put them in the fridge first and foremost. If you have a bouchon, this handy dandy little topper, that goes over the top. It helps keep the pressure inside the bottle, which will make the carbonation in the bottle last longer. Not um, critical. More important is that it's cold in the fridge. If you don't have a bouchon, put a little plastic wrap or a little plastic baggie over the top. Just get it back in the fridge, and it should last anywhere from a day to three, depending on how much and wine you still have in the bottle. If you only have a glass left and you aren't going to do it, that just sounds like a party to me. <laughs> <laughs> There's the uh, the wax on the outside, right? Uh, if you have one glass left, you should probably just pour it in a glass and deliver it to your neighbor's doorstep. Oh man, I think that's a that's a win. For Share everybody. the love. Share the love. Yeah, and and I know uh, several of you are not going to have a problem uh, having your party and having fun with uh, the people in your household and and enjoy maybe two bottles of sparkling. Uh, Jeremy, thank you so much for helping train us, guys. I hope that you can all join us this Thursday. Listen to my brother, our winemaker, David Ogilvy. We'll uh, go in depth on all three of these wines. Um, you can order them. Try to get your orders in as soon as possible so that we can deliver them to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon.